Hi, Shaquille. How are you? Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Right. Thanks for having us here today. My pleasure. Um, as you know, Einstein Academy of Innovative Learning and Self Reflection Group, uh, we are very big on innovative learning and education. Can you just please briefly describe what your school is and how your school is different from other public high schools or elementary schools, I should say, out in New York City? Well, our school, Wellspring Elementary, um, its brand is creativity. Mm -hmm. um, Wellspring focuses on the identif on identifying talent and mm -hmm. developing talent in children. Now, it uses creativity and divergent thinking as a platform to do that. So we really believe that we're not here to tell the kids what they should be. Like some um, institutions will have the kids uh, believe that they should be doctors or they should go into science or right. they should go into writing. Right. We let the kids actually decide for themselves. Mm -hmm. We're facilitators. So we get to see we, our job as educators uh, is to try to identify the talent of the child mm -hmm. and let the child the, the, himself or herself display that talent and then we develop that talent. School prepares you for life. School prepares you for a career. In reality, that is not true. School does not prepare you for a career. I want to talk about a, 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 one of my a favorite, favorite philosopher of mine, John Dewey, uh, who said, education uh, is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. Now, the importance of education is clearly important. I'm not arguing that with you. Uh, obviously, we need to have a basic, not basic, but uh, expert level of communication skills, math and English, uh, also science and history to understand our community that we live in. Uh, but I know your school doesn't have competitions. Now, in elementary school, uh, there's, you know, the, the famous spelling bee, which is, you know, everyone does this, uh, which students like, but, you know, you, you don't hold spelling bees and several competitions. Can you please uh, explain to, to me, uh, to us, our, your views on competitiveness and placing competitions in schools? Right. So, we do teach our kids to be competitive and to excel, right? Mm -hmm. But we do not engage them in competitions where they are at heads amongst, each, at odds with each other, right? Mm -hmm. So um, there are many reasons why we don't do that. Um, number one, we believe that the, the competitions, the competitions bring the brings the beast out of you, whereas cooperation brings the best out of you. Mm -hmm. So we encourage our students, our children to cooperate and that reaching the goal to be a winner is a cooperative effort yes right so if someone if we have the children competing against one another we're naturally starting to harbor bad feelings i want you to lose because i want first place yes. because there's only one first place right let's face it right exactly. now the second place winner could have studied longer and harder than the first place winner. The second place winner could have went on stage and was nervous and spelled that word wrong, even yeah. though the child knew how to spell that word. The first place winner got all the words that he studied uh, right. for, and he got the easy words. It just happened that way and got first place. Now, the message that we're sending to everyone else is that you failed, mm -hmm. and everyone else, I mean, everyone has failed, and this first right. place person is the winner. Right. Now, right. It doesn't sound like a motivational strategy when you reward 1% right. and you demotivate 99%. Right. right? So we redefine the concept of winning. We tell our children there's nothing wrong with making a mistake. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong in failing. Failure is not an end and a loss. Yes. Failure is a, pro is a step in the process towards success. Now, if we reward just one winner, we're sending the wrong message. We're saying yes. you failed. You're not going to get that trophy. So we have activities where everybody's involved but we reward everybody because you have to look at the effort they put in so we did uh, the terra nova testing and um they performed better than 91 percent of america 91 percent of america i just want to emphasize that which is very very impressive is a college degree worth something these days in this time of era right now in terms of landing a career we believe it's very archaic, mm -hmm. and we believe it's not keeping up with the times. Right. And there are many signs of that. Amongst them, you have today a record number of millionaires in their 20s, mm -hmm. right, who have not gotten their PhDs or right. their masters. Right. And what does that tell us? Most people go to college because they need, want to get a job, because right. they want to make money. Right. Now, if the society has gone to a level where people can become millionaires without the PhD degree or the right. master's degree, that means there's something wrong with the current system or mm -hmm. it has to be tweaked. So I think what's happening is there's a lot of disruption happening in many industries, and I think it's overdue in the, in the college industry.
perfection is just striving for that. But what does self-perfection mean to you? Imperfection is part of human perfection. Exactly. If you want to define that yes. way, right? Because yes. it's only through mistakes and, and, and failing yes. that we learn what to do best, right? Exactly. But there's a common thread throughout that is that I am constantly trying to be do the best I can right. in whatever I'm doing. So we tell our students that whatever you decide to be, if you want to be an right. artist or a writer or a programmer, right. but be the best in that field. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And we believe that's self-perfection. Exactly. Are you happy? And what is happiness to you? when you can do something to serve others. So happiness comes when you give yourself, your time, your effort, your right. resources to others. And that I find a person is happy. Well, thanks a lot. Pleasure right. having you. Thanks so much.